that's it. <laughs> that, that that does bring a um a little warm glow to my heart. Mom, get off the phone. I'm using the internet. <laughs> Did anyone else used to hum along with it? No. No. <laughs> Just no. me then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In a nutshell. Okay. It is such a nostalgic sound, though. It really is a nostalgic sound. God. We are uh. back, people. Uh, um, Sean Calab is back on the Mixler, which is at mixler.com forward slash rogue2media. Uh, we have a chat room, which is bristling with people, shall I say. Wow. A lot of people there. I am joined by Lee Medcalf. Yeah, hello again. Dave Probert. Hello. And Andy has somehow wangled his way on here as well. You're never getting rid of me. <laughs> and we're still talking about before the internet. Uh, we are also still giving away buildings. So if you want a building, let us know. Either type it in the chat room or phone us up. That is fine. Uh, and foods, you, what foods do you heat up or warm up? Uh, it's like a subtopic, but what yeah. was it? Um, the in, before the internet again. Let's go back to that. Let's... Well, I was, I was going to say that there have been some building requests in our absence. Oh, have there? Uh, 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 Thomas McCamley would like the West Edmonton Mall of America. <laughs> <laughs> it is yours, sir. And uh, Scott Mather was asking if they could have um, fictional buildings, in which case he'd like the uh, the unseen University Tower of Art. Ah, no. No, they have to be real, because then we can go to the buildings and say that we own this building, and you can let me in. <laughs> and uh, Jack Mulcate would like St. Pan- Pancras Station. It is his. <laughs> I you... can't help but feel that w- when I turn up in Florida to go and claim the vehicle assembly building for my own, um, Na- NASA might have issue with this. Mm. I'm assuming you've cleared this with everyone yet, Elton. Of course. No, oh, okay. Of course, no. It it doesn't even need clearance. You can. That is now your building. You can go up to it, knock on it whenever you want. Mm. That is yours. <laughs> Martin Thompson would like your house, Elton. <laughs> it's yours. He's found the loophole. <laughs> nah. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, well, it's Look, yours, Martin. Yeah, Move yeah. It anytime you like. <laughs> Turn up tomorrow; it's fine. I'll hand over the keys <laughs> and the mortgage. Yeah, just 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 tell <laughs> tell the kids tell the kids they got to pack up. I <laughs> know oh, they, they they come as part of the house. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Ah, now in your face. <laughs> Who wants them? Who's the loser now? Yeah, <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So. Nobody got a, well, nostalgia, nobody hummed along with that noise, the internet loading noise. Uh, I guess I should ask, mm. how did we all find the internet? Ooh, um, I, well, I mean, for me, I found the internet because um, I became the IT manager of the weird essential oils firm I was working at. Um and basically, we got a 486 computer to handle all our lab tech gear. And then I somehow, I don't quite know how I managed to do it. I actually managed to convince them that we needed the internet and got them to pay for a Pipex account. And it was £14 a month. And I got them to do it and buy it. And then I had, so I had this big 90 megahertz server with a full 64 um 64 meg of RAM and uh, yeah, this little Pipex 14, uh, 14 4K modem and Pipex, and that's how wow. I... on a 486. That must have been a beast of a computer with 64 meg of RAM. It, that was. Been... <sighs> it was, it was, it was the size, it was the size of a bus. Actually, it was the size of the land of the jail was now. I think about it, but it was, um, it was... and it was also full of porn. Ha <laughs> ha, circle of life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it actually only had it only had like um, sixteen colours, so it wasn't very good porn if we did manage to find any. But um, yeah, so porn, so that, porn oh, is porn. I'm afraid that is the rule. Porn is just porn. Yeah. Oh, and Lucky Minty would like to have the flat iron building in New York. Right. I'm gonna have to Google that because I don't know what that looks like. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's how I found the internet. I I literally I came in at the ground floor, so to speak. Um. Back in, I think it was nineteen ninety-two, 
1993, something like that. It was really, really early. But it was literally right on top. I'll, I'll find out what date it was because I know I knew what was playing the music um, when I. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Bad was number one, number one album. Michael Sweet. Jackson. Sarah, yes, that building is yours. Congratulations. Mm. Yeah, hold on. Bad. When did Bad come out? Oh, I'm gonna guess eighty nine. Yeah, you're gonna reckon eighty nine. That's that's really early then. I that, that wouldn't that wouldn't be a four eighty six then. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a 486. They played yeah, like 486 is what early 90s. Hashtag computer geek. Yeah. 1987 bad was. Oh, was it? Yeah. That's, yeah. So that would be, yeah, right at the top, right at the beginning of the 486s, I oh. reckon. Dave, but how it... about you? How did you come along on the internet? How did you find it? Oh, uh, I think the first time I kind of used it properly was. Um, um, my first girlfriend's house uh, because she, she uh, their family just got it because uh, she was sort of like studying at college and stuff and so it was decided that would be a useful thing to get and yeah I sort of uh, I think it was when I first started using it on a regular basis mm. so yeah there's a what sort of you used to dial up though what, oh actually no, t- t- tell a lie I, I think actually now I think about it my dad was a was a big user um yeah yeah, so just before that, about, oh god, no! I, I just had a horrible, just had a horrible acid flashback mm. of, of seeing my dad using a chat room, <laughs> a video chat room where there was all sorts of bizarre things going on, and there was just like there's people doing um, obscene things in, with web, webcams, and then just in the bottom left of that corner, there's just my dad's smiling face, just giggling at it all. <laughs> it's like, what? what the <laughs> fuck is all this? <laughs> Mm. It was just, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, it, one, one of many bizarre experiences my dad introduced me to. But I won't go into <laughs> <it> now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Up next on Shonky Lab, therapy, parents. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, and uh, just, just, yeah, just to correct my timeline. Yeah, nineteen eighty nine was the four eight six. Thanks to Mister Palastides in the chat room. Uh, yeah, so it would be nineteen eighty nine. Oh, he's a proper twat, that bloke. Yeah. <laughs> Dantic arsehole, just picking holes in two years. You go, oh dear, just my poor, poor old memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I discovered it. Um, it was through Amanda and her family, and her dad heard of this new thing called the internet. Yeah, I think he was on AOL at the time oh. with the three little blocks where you had the uh, AOL written on the screen, and then it was three circles on the loading screen I think it was yeah uh, and then it, it was just just dial up there was no broadband at that time that hadn't been invented or discovered uh, and so I used to spend a little time in chat rooms in American chat rooms American football chat rooms just I was a troll I, <laughs> I was just so why'd you pick the ball up why'd you do that and More- more things change the more they stay the same. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very true. Yeah, it's very true. It was just easy. Why 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 don't you call it carry ball? It's not football. You don't hand egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, oh, such a dick. I still am a dick. But there we go. <laughs> but then we went round to Amanda's aunt and uncles, and they had broadband mm. when that first kicked off, mm. and they should put their laptop in front of me and they showed me Google uh, Google Earth, I think it was. And I was hooked. I was sat there going, oh, I want this. I want this. But I resisted for such a long time, up until maybe 10 years ago when, mm. when we moved house, moved up to where we live now. That was the point where we ended up getting the internet. And believe it or not, I wasn't even that bothered. I didn't even want it. I think I knew it would be heroin. And... <laughs> I was no, I don't, don't want that. What it, it was the internet or heroin? Uh, well, it <laughs> turned into my heroin. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Needing, needing to be on it all the time, and alas, yep. here I am. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, that's that's how I discovered it. But, but Andy, I suppose it was all already there for you. No, not quite. O- almost, but not quite. Uh, I I got our first kind of proper PC was I think in ninety four ish. Uh, I remember it was Windows 3.11. Nice. Um, 
and, and, and then obviously Windows 95 came out shortly after that. Uh, so I had the joy of getting Windows 95 installed. I always remember we had the Wildlife Pack, which was like desktop back, uh, wallpaper and different sounds because that was a big deal. Um, we had the Microsoft Network installation CD because I remember I had a really terrible video to install the bloody thing. And yeah, um, it was my crack, uh, much like it was your heroin because, you know, it's dial up. You have to pay for the phone call. No, no one could call our house throughout the 90s at all, ever, because it was always on the internet. And, and then I realized that the danger of paying your phone bill quarterly. Um, yeah, we, we had a, <laughs> prices jump from maybe 20 quid a, a quarter to 480 odd. <laughs> Ouch. I wasn't popular. <laughs> no. no. Oh, dear. Um, uh, just on the chat, uh, Scott Matheson would like the Great Pyramid of Giza. Oh, nice choice. Yes. That um, is yours. Yeah. Though, Good luck Mar getting over there, though. Yeah, I was going to say, good luck getting it back in the packet. Um, and uh, Martin Thompson wanted to know if he could have the good Toblerone from Gaza um, instead. <laughs> as a settle. As a settle. Um, yeah, anyway. I don't know. Really odd. Um, right. Uh, what was I going to say? The other, There was something... Oh, um, oh. Go on, you can do it. No, I was... I've, 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 it was halfway through the conversation and then my brain just gone. Um, there was. Uh, I always remember with the dial-up, the scariest thing with the dial-up was obviously if you spent too long online dialing down, and I actually, um, I always remember getting Half Life, Half Life Two rather, on my on my PC at home, and having to download it all on a fourteen four modem. And I, always, I always remember it going. It's one point one gig. It's going to take me 17 hours to download this thing. And I, I remember actually setting Steam up and having it download and actually going off going off to work and then coming back. And it was like 10% or something like that because like the phone had gone down or something. Oh, stupid. that's painful. I mean, it, yeah, man, hello. And I, was, and I always remember sitting there doing this thing with, with Darren and Jess because I used to have three PCs in one room. We used to land game. And... It was lit I was literally sitting there going, you know, this steam will never take off because, like, there is no way people who's going to sit there on their phones, uh, sit there on 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 the phone, you know, waiting for seventeen hours for something to download. And now we're all sitting there like, yeah, sage wise old men going, hmm, yes, this steam, it's a complete shambles. No one's ever going to use that. And now all of my games are on Steam. Exactly. Now, <laughs> now, now you're living on there. Exactly. 90% of my computer sits on a Steam machine somewhere. Yeah. I uh, can tell you the first PC game I got. Go on. Star Trek A Final Unity. Oh, God. I don't even know what that is. Ah, you missed, classic. You, you missed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to uh, very briefly finish off on the music side of things because music is, has blown up on the internet since the discovery nay the creation of itunes and other platforms like it uh but i used to go down to the library and then copied their cds <laughs> yeah did anyone else used to do that ah no. i i'd forgotten libraries were a thing i used to spend so much time there yeah. well no one's going to remember them if this government gets on its way That's um a little bit of politics <laughs> Yeah, well, with the invention of the internet and like iTunes and stuff like that, nobody... See, when was the last time you guys bought CDs or cassettes or anything like that? Because nobody I know, well, apart from me and Amanda, we're the only ones who really like a hard copy of the music, just in case anything goes completely tits up. And it's always nice to sit down and listen to and even work on an album nobody really works on an album anymore because you used to go out and buy your cd you used to put it in and if you found out that it was a bit duff you'd still try and work on it because you'd pay 10 11 12 quid to get that cd mm. and so you'd work on it and them days are gone now it, it's all just instant gratification of i want that song i want that song i want that song i want that song yeah i mean I mean, I'll I'll say my bit and get out of the way so that everyone else can jump in. But it's like, for me, I I buy CDs of 
soundtracks and scores. So I, I, my last one I bought was actually The Force Awakens. And then for Christmas, uh, I got the um, Indiana Jones uh, CD box set. So I've actually got all of the soundtracks for all of the films in a box set, in a nice little leather box, which is lovely. Mm. So I like that. I like CDs. I, I do. Um, I, li- I like the fact that you can just take them out and just stick them in anything and away you go. Whenever I want to share a piece of music on my iPod, iPod or my iPhone, it's like it's you have to do seven incantations, s- sacrifice a bat, and then sort of <laughs> like wait for seven hours for the ghost of Steve Jobs to come and bless your machine four times with his socks. I mean, it's just, uh, it just <laughs> irritates. But um, yeah, my, all all of my music I used to buy CDs, and I I still to the, to this day, even though I do MP3s, obviously, but it's just to this day I would I will always prefer to use a, get a CD first. Good, good. Mm. What about you, Dave? Ah, uh, well, these these days I do tend to uh, do MP3s on my phone through. I do like Amazon Music on my phone because I tend to get things on a whim. Because you mm. know, I'll suddenly I'll suddenly remember a bit of music or something, and they'll go, "Oh, actually, let's see if like let's see if that's available." And yeah, I'll, I'll, or I'll pick up things at a sale that's mm. on. Yeah, you know, and yeah, I I get some cheesy crap off that. I think the last thing I bought off there was like <laughs> like the greatest hits of Billy Joel for like three quid. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, that's... But, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can't remember the last time I bought a CD. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I originally had, like, my first MP3 player was like an iPod. Mm. And I stuck with it for ages because that was how I discovered podcasts and stuff like that. Like a first gen one? Uh, it was, I think it was like a one of the first. Uh, not nanos. The uh, they're the first little ones, not the full size. Yeah, you but know, when they were the size of like a like a phone is now. Mm. But like, mm. but yeah, I, I bought it second hand for like, I was working in a pub at the time, and uh, there was a guy who was upgrading to get a new one, so I basically bought his old one off him. Mm. And yeah, and but then I, it was it was okay until I needed to change computers because I had a laptop, and then I ended up buying like a desktop. No, and. Yeah, like getting like transferring everything over was such a faff and a massive pain in the ass that eventually, like, yeah, I, I ended up sort of like downloading everything again. And then when I ended up having to change the uh, change the drive over, and the prospect of having to do that all over again, I just went, "Oh fuck this!" and just started uh, just just buying sort of like downloads from other places. Because those were downloads that didn't require a proprietary system in order to access them, I could just have like the MP3 just in a file on my computer, and I could put it onto onto whatever I wanted to listen to it on. Yeah. So so yeah, it, it, by that point, it was just sort of like, oh, you know, fuck Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I still like the CDs. So I got a backup of it mm. just in case. I mean, I mean, with with the music, the one thing I will say, and maybe this leads back to the video games thing. But the one thing I will say that I have discovered thanks to the internet is is music that I would not have necessarily found had had them had it not been around. You know, just like the the sort of whole thing for people doing streamcasts and stuff like that and making their own radio stations effectively. Yeah. Mm. And my my favorite, which is still my favorite to this day, and is still something that I sit there and even now I you know, I know there's there's whole pe- bunches of people who just go around listening to the guy going tra la 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 all the time, and I still yeah I still feel embarrassed about saying my one. And it's there's there's a radio station called Slay Radio, and they do there's professional musicians doing actual remixes of Commodore sixty four music. Nice. And there's a whole radio station dedicated to it, and you can actually do requests, and you get DJs on it, and everything. And it's like I, I literally that's the that was the my. I found it by accident, and then I sort of like, I'm like, oh my god, I've I, I'm I'm both in the future, and still sitting in 1982 listening to the Ocean Loader, but now being done in a Jean Michel Jarre style, and it's just like, that's fucking amazing. I can dig that, yeah, definitely. And yeah, so um, yeah, SlayRadio.org, I think it is, and it's. It just they they they've got you can actually do you can actually queue up a playlist as well, so you can actually 
listen to it and it, it, it sort of automatically picks from one of the 18,000 remixes it's got on its books. Or you can do like a jukebox and you can queue up like 14 of them in a row. And it's like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, I can listen to the, a remix of, I don't know, was it Speedball 2? Or um, Thrust, or uh, Mission Impossible, or you know, Commando. So dumb- c- yeah. to to get your feel of that sort of genre of music, then did you ever record the music off of your te- uh, off your telly that you yes. play? Because I used to record the Lemons uh, music. Yeah, I loved that Lemons track, and so I'd sit there, I'd open up the game, I'd put the two blockers. And then just let my lemmings walk in between the two blockers, and then just record the uh, the song. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was that was literally. It. I mean, especially with something like the sixty four or the um or the um, spectrum, where you could actually run the audio back through the tape deck. You could actually record straight off the machine. Oh, nice! And it was like that was awesome, and that led to one of the best April Fools that me and uh, Jess performed on on Darren. Um, <laughs> which was which was he 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 was the last person to adopt a Commodore sixty four, and we had and he so he had the Spectrum and he read in this magazine there was this game and it had this fantastic had this fantastic soundtrack for a Spectrum obviously, and so what we did was we said oh we've got a pirate copy of this we'll, <laughs> let, we'll let you listen to the music, and what we did was we went around my house and recorded the theme tune to Thrust. By, by Rob Hubbard, which is this fantastic sort of multi-track sort of <laughs> and we recorded it onto tape and I brought it we brought it around to Darren and we went, look, this is this is Starquake on the spectrum. And <laughs> he was like he was like he was like a man re energized. He was like, this is what this see, I told you the spectrum can make music like this. Look at how <laughs> Like, we're both like, mm-hmm, uh-huh. And he ran out, and I'm pretty sure he bought it. And then a week later, he was like, you fuckers. Because it was like, because the start, cause by, by Spectrum terms, it was kind of going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah. I, I, I've always loved I've always loved video game music, and I've always loved the 64. And the, that, just memories like that have, have, have a very... Powerful emotional effect on me. <laughs> yeah, just ask, just ask Darren about Starquake next time you see him in the pub, and just see if he can get his eye to eye to twitch. <laughs> I certainly will do that. <laughs> okay, seems we're on the video games. Then mm-hmm. has video game video games or video gaming improved with the internet? Because I believe it. It has dived. Yes, there, there was. There's, there's so many things different now. You, you hardly ever sit on a sofa with your friend and play it. Yeah. I miss co-op gaming. Yeah, co- co-op gaming is it, like couch co-op. It's just sort yes, of dived couch down. co-op. Yes, yes. Um, mm. and, and sort of the problem with sort of online things moving online in general is the fact that like you buy a game now, and mm. half the time it's not finished. Or, you know, if you want anything decent on it, you've got to get all the DLC. Oh. Mm. Whereas, like, I mean, I've, I've got, like, a PS2. Uh, Matt at Geek Planet just, um, has, like, had a reconditioned PS2. And uh, we, we sort of talked gaming all the time, and I said I, I used to play on the PS2 a lot. Sorry. Carry and, on. And so, uh, yeah, he, he gave me this old uh, PS2, which I've got now. And I, I, I basically, I went out and sort of, bought all the games I played a lot in my mid twenties. And yeah, and the thing is, you know, with all those games, you've got the disc and you've got the whole game. It's like you don't need to download anything extra. It's like, you know, everything is, is there on the disc. You put the disc in and you play it. Yeah, there was no questions about any bugs or anything like that. Worth it. It, it was already trimmed out. Yeah. It worked. Well you still get bugs, but the thing was you knew that it was kind of that was it. The yeah. game was bugged. It was bugged, but um, but the thing, the thing with the thing with games then as opposed to now is, is it, first off, it seemed like a good idea when you got all these massive multiplayer games. But then obviously you spent all the time on your phone, and so you know your phone bill would be like seven hundred quid. Yeah. But but nowadays 
why do you want to go online and play with other people? Because everyone else is, you basically come in, it's like sticking your face in a ditch. <laughs> Literally, you are putting yourself in the worst possible situation with the worst possible people pissing on your head. And it's just, video games as a single player experience now have got better. As a multiplayer experience, they have just got worse. If I want to, if I want to play a game, I play a game. If I want to be told by a 12-year-old in San Jose that my mother sucks cocks in hell and smells like a camel, then I'll go online. You know, it's just shit. <laughs> but the multiplayer type shooters, like Call of Duties, my son is really good at it because his, his reflexes are, are really good. And I know that my reflexes are slowed down, so I, I can't compete. But he is that... He, he won't go on there and... Um, slag people off because I'll clip around the ear roll but mm. <laughs> he'll be talking to his friends and he, he kind of takes up the whole room with just talking to his friends mm. and it, he, he's so good at it it's so annoying you you watch his kill uh, death rate whatever it is and he's like 35 for 2 and you mm. how the hell are you doing he's that annoying person that knows where everyone is jumping out of the corner and shooting people and bouncing around like a, a deranged rabbit and it, it's just so annoying and so that has thrown me off with the online stuff mm. I, I don't want to go there I mean, a lot of those sort of you know, realistic shooters I just find so dull everything's brown Yep. And yep. Camouflage, and it's no fun I mean, like, I've got like one of the one of the games I picked up as soon as I got the PS2 was Time Splitters <laughs> And I remember like the the um, multiplayer on that is especially like the deathmatch mode is just insane because like mm. um, not so much Time Splitters two but the uh, the one that came after that I, I don't think yeah. it was Time Splitters three it had like a subtitle but yeah, yeah like you could have sort of like up to like like fourteen or fifteen like bots in there and you could have various skill levels and the the, the bots, you, you know, the characters you could unlock as you played the game were just mental. There was like one that was just like a dancing bear in like a little waistcoat and a fez. <laughs> there, there was one for like there's like a creepy kind of Halloween kind of level. I uh, had a get, dream like that once. Get mm. all these like, like <laughs> disembodied sort of cow carcasses like <laughs> running around, and you can play as one of those or have one of those running around. And so uh, uh, back in the pub I worked in, uh, uh, Mike the landlord, or I like used to work with on Tuesday, I'd go, I'd go up to the uh, the flat above the pub and we'd just spend the evening playing sort of like couch co-op games. Yeah. And we'd just play loads and loads of Time Splitters 3 death matches because they were always fucking chaos. And, and the like, thing is, you could choose with what, what weapon you started with. And, and then, like, you could start off with things like bricks. <laughs> so, you, so you've got sort of like 15 like people including yourselves like they're just hoofing bricks at each other and running to <laughs> trying to be the first person to actually pick up anything useful <laughs> nice. yeah, that sounds like playing in the street in the 80s that's brilliant yeah, yeah. and it, oh, like, like baseball bats was always a good one to start with because there would always be that shame if you were the first person that like managed to pick up a gun and then you got clocked over the blah bat by somebody from behind and immediately <laughs> lost it nice but yeah, yeah. But it, it was bright it was colourful it was bedlam it was hilarious it's just shouting in rage because, like, yeah, there's a couple of like a, uh, you know, like crazy looking characters who even like like the bear. I remember being like, it looked ridiculous, but its skill level was really high. <laughs> it's just like getting shot, or, like finding out you've been shot, and it's like a fucking bear again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I had the similar sort of thing with Quake, Quake Three, yeah, or Quake Arena. Where, you, but that again, that was it made it made it an event when you sort of would LAN connect your PC, so you'd have everyone would come around on a Saturday morning and bring all their gear and bring all their PCs, and you'd hook it all up. There'd be wires trailing all over the fucking house, and you'd sort of when you finally got it working, because it had been such an effort to get it working in the first place. It was like there is no way I'm stopping playing this. And it used to be, you used to choose your games carefully and you used to have a really good time. I remember, I remember my, um, my stag do was basically, it was basically six people with, with desktops that we'd organized to come around my house. And we all played X-Wing Alliance and then Mech Warrior 2. And yeah, maybe that's not the best way of doing your stag do. Um, it did get more raucous towards the end, but you know, that sort of stuff, when you can pick the people you're playing with, that's brilliant. 
Yeah, uh, you want to play with your friends, not random strangers and all this. Although oh. that being said, mm -hmm. I was I, I broke my arm back in '96, uh, and in the uh, in the ward they had a SNES, um, mm -hmm. which was already a little bit old at that point. I think the N64 came out, but they had uh, Mario Kart on there, and you know didn't know anyone from Toffee, but everyone knew Mario Kart. So you know a great excuse to. Uh, play a bit of massive co-op there. Plus, I became a master at winning that game with one hand. I, I could operate the controls. It was, it was legendary. Really? One, one oh, hand, yeah. One-handed Mario Kart. Euphemism. Euphemism. <laughs> um, but yeah. Someone just mentioned on the chat room there about playing yeah, Doom 2 with two TVs back-to-back. -back. I, re I remember doing that with, with people. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, Gaz said it, didn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah, that that again. It's two two playstations. You had to have two playstations, two TVs, two sets of controllers, and two copies of the game. I've, oh no, no, you, you, you could do it with one copy of the game. There was a, like, like yeah, when it was like loading on one, because I only noticed because I I did it with a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. Was the fact that, like when one when one was ready to go and it stopped, and the, like the little loading icon stopped, you could pop the disc out and pop it into the other playstation. Uh -huh. and, then, and then it would like whiz around on the other PlayStation to load up, and then you were good to go. Nice. Did anyone play GoldenEye on the N64? Oh, God, I, I, I have GoldenEye stories. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say, it, 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 anyone else find the cardinal sin was when you're playing the co-op and the guy would be looking in your half of the screen. It was like it was like the cardinal sin you don't look. Yeah, you don't look at the other <laughs> half of the screen. It's, just, yeah. it's like, the fuck you doing, man? The fuck are you playing at? Yeah, you're cheating. You're looking at the screen. I'm looking at the fucking screen. My yeah. son says that now. When I when I've played uh, Call of Duty with him, you're you're watching. You're watching. You're watching. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just killed you. No, you was watching. Yeah, yeah it, it still goes on now. Yeah. yeah. Remember the like, the first house I'd moved into after sort of yeah, moving out from my mum's place. Um, we all worked together in the same pub, mm. and uh, uh, one of them, I mate Shaggy, had moved out, and so we turned his room into what we called the games room. Nice. So, so like, we put up a dartboard, mm. and we had like yeah, it's like Yahtzee and stuff in there. And then we we went out and bought a second hand N sixty four purely for Goldeneye, purely just to play Goldeneye on it. We didn't want to play anything else. And, and we'd got like um all the rumble packs and the, you know, the extra memory things as well. And who, whoever had uh, owned it previously had unlocked everything on Goldeneye as well as an extra bonus. Nice. <laughs> so basically, we got everything just unlocked: paintball mode, big head mode. Like all of that was all sort of unlocked and ready to play. <sighs> nice. That's... And yeah, we, we, we'd get over from sort of working in the pub about sort of like one o'clock and we'd sit there playing Goldeneye until like three. Mm. Just to, to, I, I always played, I always played a Baron the Sabbath and he was always Odd Job. <laughs> oh, that was the cheat though, wasn't it? Because apparently Odd Job was hard to, the tracking, the auto aim wouldn't work. Well, Odd Job was a nightmare to play against when you uh, played Throwing Knives. Especially yeah. when you were because Bar I was Baron the Sabbath, who was like, like seven feet tall and an odd job, sort of five foot fuck all, running around like, throwing <laughs> knives at my knees and then fucking off. <laughs> and I'm just like, where are you, little bastard? I was going to tell you, because it's, it's only got one uh, analog stick on the N64 controller. Uh, I went back and had a play on, I, I found this N64 in the loft a couple of years ago. Could, could I operate that game? Could I? Fuck. Oh, there, my my there, brain there, no there, longer knows how to deal with one analog stick. There, there was a control setup where you could use two N64 controllers. Mm. Oh so dear! You, yeah, because you had, you had uh, like the, uh, the four ports at the front. There was there's a deliberate control setup you could have where you had an N64 controller in each hand, and one one analog stick was the aim, and the other was the one you looked around and moved with. And the yeah. Wii was born. Yes. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's proper hardcore goal night. That was. <laughs> yeah. We used to have a PlayStation night, and we used to go around my brother-in-laws, and we every now and again we there was a time where you could actually rent out your PlayStation twos or a PlayStation from Blockbusters or from another shop down the road, which had one in store, yeah. and everyone would be like, "Yes, they've got it in stock. We can go there and rent it out," and you. We'd play either the Formula One or there was a uh, there was an international track and field game where you could have four players on the PlayStation, and we'd all um, all bring our socks with us, and because we'd bring our socks because you can go between the buttons really smoothly but quickly, so you can get a, a high score instead of tapping with your two fingers to try and uh, get your energy up. 
you'd mm. waggle your little finger in a sock. And so there was four grown men laying on a, a floor while all the girls looked around going, what the bloody hell are they doing? We're all laying on the floor just attacking these two buttons. And I, I, you know what? I get the feeling that with some creative editing, that whole conversation there could come out very, very different. <laughs> <laughs> Five guys with a sock going. Grrr! Oh, the girls looked. Yeah. <laughs> That's windbreakers work. between each of us. <laughs> yeah, just don't look in the eyes. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then hold your cup up above your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, don't eat. No, I don't want a biscuit. Thanks very much. No. no. I think I've turned it down. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Now it was just I loved that. I really, really enjoyed the just the sense of playing with other people in the same room it's not the same as what it is now um mm. what about cheats and stuff like that oh Game god genies yeah god all so the, what all... were there what were there that we could use for cheats on the video games Ooh. it was uh, mag what was game Ma- was it games master <laughs> yeah all the <laughs> bad do, influence all do, you like, TV. do you not like games master no were you the person that wanted the Neo Geo but couldn't afford it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so was I, don't worry. No, I mean, I died. I, I, I was, I, I, at that point, I was a little bit too old for Games Master. I was kind of, I was just sort of working out what girls were for at that point. And as, as, what girls were for? That sounds terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, with a bit of creative editing. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you can I, you can have me saying that while you're doing your thing with your sock. Um, <laughs> no, um, I was just working out, you know, sort of, hey, there was other things out in the world uh, that I suddenly didn't really care about video games anymore. And, and Games Master came along just at that point. So I was kind of suddenly too cool for video games, um, which I suddenly, I sort of felt was a bit too much effort and went back. Um but no, uh, I mean, for me, I always used to get game information out of magazines like Zazap and Crash and CNVG. And uh, yeah, there was always the Konami code to, to, to unlock things. Yeah. Which was up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. And you could do that on the controller on a on any Konami game. you get like cheat modes on everything. Mm-hmm. Snez. There you go. I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry, I've just interrupted everything, derailed everything. <laughs> well, did anyone get um, cheat books? I remember them. I, I don't. I don't recall if I ever got one because there was Nintendo Magazine. Was it? Was that what it was called? That used to have like guides and tips. Prima Strategy guides had loads of those. I like, had like, power and stuff like that. Yeah, I had one for Final Fantasy VII, and that was it. Um. But um, uh, Tom Tom McCambly just said on um, on chat, does anyone have a favourite video game that they remember from the eighties? Uh, I mean, well, ooh. Well, arcade. Well, arcade. He's saying arcade, but we did arcades, didn't we? Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we've done arcades. Um, we rinsed that for three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember what I said in that. Oh, blimey, well, like... that was own. That was the eighties. Yeah, that was definitely the eighties battle zone. Um, no, well, it was the. I, I did remember once in the uh, the, the Trocadero in London, they had a ridiculous version of Afterburner, which that you played inside a gyroscope. Oh it was, yeah, well, it, it yeah. was still the same basic Afterburner game, but like, like if you move the stick around, it basically just like you, you were strapped into this chair and it sort of spun you around sort of three hundred and sixty degrees as you moved like the yep. plane around. Of course, nobody played the game properly. They were just sort of just whacking the stick around, trying to sort of G lock. It's called. That's uh, yeah. That's what, uh, yeah. I, I remember those. Um, uh, blimey, I'm trying to think of all the things that I played. I mean, I used to play arcades all the time, and and skipped skipped the the college I used to go to to go down to Margate, Margate, Margate by by mini <laughs> on a cold wet week weekday is not good. Um, but yeah, I mean things like. Um, the, was it Space Ace, which just used to eat your money until you, you lost, um, and then there was um, Rampage, which was fucking awful, and then there was um, Space Harrier, when you sat in a chair and sort of rocked backwards and forwards. Commando, which went on to the Commodore sixty four. Xenon, oh, uh, Operation Wolf with the um, machine gun, in the cabinet. Yep. 
Yep, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, oh, he, he said, I meant like a favorite place to go and play games in the 80s. Oh, right. So there was there an arcade that we used to actually go to? No, if, if I was on holiday, then I, I just looked forward to going on holiday because yeah. there were, were uh, cabinets on the yeah, site. Yeah, there was used like yeah, arcade machines. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there but was I, a... I, I, well, I was going to say, coming from a time before the internet, I'm, I'm guessing in our childhoods we used to venture outside and do stuff, you know, like yes. ride bikes and people used to knock for each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe you run down the street, knock, knock on your mate's door. Can, can he come out and play? It's like, <laughs> no, he's in trouble. Well, when yeah. can he come out and play? <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the one thing um, internet is very good at is now you can just tell everyone that you're tired, bored, and to fuck off. Because <laughs> I tell you what, I used to have a friend of mine called Simon Miller who loved his bike, and he used to come round my house every fucking day and knock on the back window, uh, the patio window, and sort of go, "Is Lee coming out?" And it's like, I don't want to go out on my bike. You've got a nimble fucking racer. We're living on a hill, and I've got a grifter. <laughs> Jesus, hey, motherfucking Christ! I'm like trying to push a tank up the hill, and you're going, "Wee!" It's like, no. I'm I'm not being the fat bloke. I'm not being tiny in G- from G Force here. I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, I, I like the grifter. I, yeah, I like the grifter as well, especially when you ran over people. It really hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have rally boxer. It, <laughs> oh, boxer. God. Luxury. Well, uh, it was luxury. either it was either the rally boxer or the rally burner. And I always thought the rally burner was um a bit more of a prestige bike. But the boxer was a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. I, I I had a, a a mountain bike, and I used to meet up with my mate Brian Brian Legate, uh, and uh, there was a big hill, very narrow alleyway down the side of this hill. Like there's like a fence on one side, hedge on the other, ninety degree bend at the bottom of this hill. It was massive. I mean, in my mind, it was like Everest, and we'd push our bikes up to the top of it, and then we'd scoot down there fast as we can, humming something from Star Wars, pretending we're doing the Death Star trench. Nice. <laughs> trying, trying hope beyond hope that we could make that turn at the bottom, which was impossible according to the laws of physics. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we're not going to let, you know, demonstrable, repeatable evidence stop us from trying. <laughs> we, we, we used to terrorise the local area on our bikes. It was so much fun. I mm. mean, I mean, I'm amazed I'm still alive, just thinking back to some of the shit we used to get up to when riding around on bikes, you know, on the roads and everything like that. It's just oh, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. How am I not dead? Smeared on the side of some Arctic. We used to skateboard down the the uh, big slide in the green. There used to be a massive slide. Um, I tried something like that once. Once. <laughs> well, we used to sit down on it, so it wasn't too bad. We weren't we weren't totally crazy and hell bent <laughs> on actually killing ourselves. But oh, that's where I was going from. <laughs> yeah, but we did. Um, where we used to live and where the shops is uh, shops are down the green. There's a, a roundabout just up the road from it, and there's a big hill. Uh, Cambridge? No, not Cambridge. One of the roads up there, and it's steep as fuck. It's crazy. And then we would all line up at the top, either on our bikes or on our skateboards, and just yeah. waiting for all the cars to disappear. And then once you committed, especially on a skateboard, once you committed to going down that hill, that's it. You're down that hill. You've yeah, got no yeah. chance. If there's a car coming up, well, he's going to have to wait, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, that's, unfortunately, that's a real frogger. <laughs> yes, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except except you only get one life. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask you guys a question, because a couple of you have got kids, right, haven't you? Yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about your kids going out and doing shit like we used to, like going out and playing, like being away from the computers? Because my my my, my uh, admittedly ignorant understanding of this is is kids can't go to a park on their own because you know it's full of pedophiles and they're going to get kidnapped and you know sold to child factories in Azerbaijan or something like that. Mm. Yeah, so well, that's... they obviously have to stay home and use computers, but well, it it strikes me that that's kind of you're missing out on hurtling down the very very narrow alleyway on a bike uh, across traffic yeah well we yeah. live on plan- we live on planet daily mail now where every corner yeah. is inhabited by hundreds of pedophiles apparently i mean we're all, we're getting there i mean you know basically when i was young my, my kind of going out to the shops on my own was kind of the age, the age was about 11 because the kid across the road when we moved into this street 
was like 16 and so i kind of fell in with the big the big brothery kind of character who sort of like was living across the street and so i kind of started going going to bromley and what have you around about sort of 11 and katie's doing that now she's going she's going on the the bus to get to secondary school so as far as i'm concerned things haven't changed um uh, the fact that she's she doesn't want to go on a bike racing down a hill is completely up to her but the fact is going out doesn't bother us i mean she's the other thing is technology now you've got a phone you got a, she's got an iphone i can actually track her down to the actual you know to the to the nearest 10 yards thanks to that phone having fi- you've fi- just fire. reminded me of something else how delightful it was to be completely out of contact with people <laughs> like completely you, you go out for the day you're out for the day you, you ain't speaking to no one because if you're not within shouting distance i can't hear you don't want to yeah. hear you yep yeah that's that's very true i mean yeah i've i i must admit nowadays i think if i if I look back to myself going, oh, I've got a mobile phone, I'd probably slap myself in the face. Yeah, yeah. See, we're, I used to do that. I used to go out with my friends. As soon as the sun was up, or as soon as Wackaday had finished, then we'd be off. That was it. We were gone. Mm. And we might come back for lunch, or we'd mm. probably be back for dinner and to watch Neighbours, and then out again until about 8 o'clock at night. And that was our routine, especially during the summer holidays. Um, nowadays there was an incident where my son he he goes on a, a bus now to school so that's not a problem I've got no problems with it he's got a good head on him I'm not saying he's a, an angel but he's got a good head on him and he knows he's right from wrong but once once you get mixed up with other kids then you can kind of lose your head I've done it before so I, I know that um, but he has had an incident where he's been over the wreck which is a couple of roads away, it's a big playing field. And there was a 15-year-old kid coming over and giving him some stick, and then it got a bit weird. And to the point where they went, okay, bye-bye, and then ran off and then told the missus and the police were called. So Mm. I know that I can trust them for that. Uh, But when I come home from work and he sat in front of that PlayStation my heart breaks just a tiny bit because I speak to him okay are you gonna go out tonight no no well everyone's on here okay (laughs) are you gonna go out this weekend yeah I'm trying to plan it what do you mean you're trying to plan it just go knock no Mm. well no one's getting back to me and that's that's different for me it was a case of you get up okay I want to go out today you take your bike you go knock on the doors and if you knock on everyone's doors and then come back, then you do something else. But now it's, okay, well, he hasn't texted me, or he hasn't got back to me, or he's still in bed, so I'm not going to bother. It's just too easy not to go out sometimes. Yeah, I find it hard to believe in 20 years he's going to be, you know, getting his mates on his podcast, going, oh, do you remember when we were kids? We used to sit in front of the computer for hours. Ah, oh, that was awesome. Yeah, they might actually be reviewing this episode. You never know. <laughs> I think that's slightly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen to these old farts bagging on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I don't, I don't think we've ever sat there and listened to Mister Chumley Wagner talking about how things are going to be great once the war effort gets going. That's we? true. <laughs> <laughs> Do your part. I mean, you know, don't listen to that on an average day. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, you say that, but I mean, you say about sort of it breaks your heart they don't want to go out, but. Let's be honest. How many times did you used to sit there? I mean, I know you did, but I mean, I know I was very sedentary, as and I'd be like, I've got my books, I've got my video games, I've got TV, I've got my music. What the fuck do I need to go out for anything? Oh, there's a new thing at the cinema. Okay, I'm going out. That was kind of my. That was kind of me. Yeah. I, and I don't think that's any different. I think it, too often people look at technology as an excuse to blame blame people for the behaviours they have which they would have had 20 years ago oh, it's, it's like you always see people going oh wait sort of patronising signs in pubs going oh, no we haven't got Wi-Fi pretend it's the 90s and talk to other people and people mm. didn't like, yeah, they go oh yeah nobody on the train talks to each other no one on the train ever talks to each other 
you don't talk to people on trains unless you already know them, and even then, that's frowned upon. Yeah, it's even very the, true. Don't make, it, don't make eye contact. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> trains are like your idols. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of them pictures of uh, people talking about about people talking on the trains, and yet they've got their nose buried in a newspaper because they don't want to speak to anyone else. They want to disappear into that world, and the world oh, yeah. has just shrunk into a, the size of a palm of our hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just the size of the technology. It's not the technology itself. I mean, human behavior hasn't changed. I mean, it makes me laugh. My mum and dad would look at me playing, I don't know, something on the 64 and go, you know, why are you always, what, why are you always playing that? Why are you always doing that? Why don't you go out and do something? And then they'd go and sit down and for the rest of the evening watch Coronation Street, EastEnders, Panorama, the news. It's like, yeah, you're so, okay, you want me to fuck off out and do something, but you are all going to sit on the sofa and watch telly for the remaining seven hours. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you go back even further. You go, right, okay, well then, you know, you're you're sitting there on a phone now, and you go, right, okay, and then they go, why are, they, why are you always reading that book? You know, right, why are you always looking at that phone? It's like, okay, I shall put the phone down. What are you doing? Oh, you're watching telly. Oh, you're reading a book. It's, how's it different? It's just, it's just, it's not the thing that you're doing, and you don't understand it. Well, tough fucking titty. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm doing exactly what everyone else do. Yeah, well, it's like every piece of new technology is always responsible for the downfall of society. Yeah, exactly. Daily Mirror World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I get on me little soapbox there. Sh- sh- shall we get off your lawn? <laughs> yeah, get off my lawn. <laughs> right okay we've got eight minutes left do we dare go into another episode or should we cram what i've got left in in these eight minutes i don't mind i'm happy to do whatever i'm happy to do whatever you like i'm, I'm happy to stick about okay to you sir dave mm. are you all right with that yeah crack on okay well i'll tell you what i will finish it here for the second part we'll have mm. a little break and mm-hmm. then we'll come back and do a very short third part, if that's all right with everyone. Very yeah, short. sure. Third part, yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll do that then. Still uh, yeah. a, have ten listeners, so it's all good. No, <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> oh, I dream of ten listeners. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll be back very, very soon. Uh, we'll finish it here. Uh, my thanks to Andy, to Lee, and to Dave for joining me on this second part. Yes, there is a third part, but I'll probably stick it on the end of this for the podcast. So, you know, 30 seconds and then we'll be back so um i'll end it here and uh we'll be back to talk about the rest of my list that i have before the internet hello everyone welcome back to part three of the shonky lab we're talking about before the internet uh i think the what foods do you warm up has kind of Pittered out. Pitter. There you, are. There you go. <laughs> I used to warm pitters up. I won't eat a cold pitter. And I won't eat cold chicken either. That is wrong. Or pizza, apparently. Or pizza. Don't judge me. What's wrong with cold chicken? It goes hard. And then if you get that stuff out of like Matt. Cold Mark... KFC after cold pizza is the best food ever. This explains mm. a lot. Yeah, do you get a lot of dicky tummy? Mmm. No. Yeah, do you maintain your thinness by the fact that you've got a large amount of E. coli racing through your system? <laughs> it's entirely possible. Yeah. <laughs> Hadn't thought about it till you mentioned it, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, yes, we're back talking about before the internet. I have on my left, shall we say, we have Dave Probert. Hello. We have Hello, um, Lee Medcalf. Does that mean I'm in the middle? You're in the middle. <laughs> okay. Okay, Andy, swap with Lee. Andy, okay. hang on, that. move, move it. Excuse me, thank you. In the thank middle, Andy Plasteles. Hello. There we go. And to my right, we have Mr. Lee Medcalf. Now he's shifted around. See, the right hand man of uh, Elton McManus. There we go. Yeah. Left out pizza overnight. It's a culinary challenge. Thomas and Campbell. What is wrong with you people? Sorry. It's a food substance that will not die. <laughs> right, so let's get back on track. 
Um, I can't remember exactly where we were, but mm. you did bring up something uh, backstage, so we, shall we say, uh, about how do we go out and purchase stuff before the eBay turned up, and what's what's all the other sites that we can use? I'm, Gumtree, Amazon, A- Amazon. Um, then there's then there's things like Zavi and HMV. Oh, well, Zavi can die in a fire. <laughs> yeah, I never said I'd do it. I mean, Christ, I think I, I think it did die in a fire, didn't it? It did, along with all my money as well. I had a, I had a, one of them gift things with about twenty five quid left on it, and then they went into administration. And, oh no, you can't use your gift tokens now. Only real money. Oh, okay. Well, funny enough, I, you were quite happy to take my real money in exchange for this, weren't you? you tossers. Mm. Oh, yes. Stores. There you go. And Virgin Virgin stores. Yeah, Vir- Virgin, oh, Virgin Virgin stores. mega stores. Mm. The one on Oxford Street. Oh. Yeah. Our price records. Anyone? Our price. Our yeah. price records are the best. I they... still have some bags upstairs. Oh man. Woolworths. I mean, when Woolworths was good, not when it went shit. Mm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're you you're that's presuming a lot. Um, it, it, it it was somewhat, yeah, yeah. And then there was there was there was um, there was always that little electric section up the back of Rumbelows, which had video games. You could buy your um, you can buy your Atari Jaguar games there. Oh bloody Argos! Hell. How is Argos still alive in this day and age? <laughs> I mean, it, I, I, it's, it's, it's hanging by a thread, but it's still there. Yeah. And well, six... but that was that, that was a major event when the new Argos catalog came out. It was like we've got to go. To get the new catalog, so yes. we know what to buy. You have to, you have to look at the toy section at the back to find out oh, what's yeah. going to be big that year. Yeah, definitely. The laminated, laminated book of dreams. <laughs> to catch the tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'm so glad Little Woods didn't do a laminated one. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping they would. <laughs> Oh, there was another mail order one. Uh, was, was it Graton or something like that? Uh, I... Yeah, yeah, the, Gr- the Graton catalogue. Yeah, you used, used to appear on the door uh, randomly from, I don't know, the postman or whatever. Yeah. Um, also full of toys, which, you know, no one would ever buy. Because you, you, could, you could try and calmly explain to your parent why, look, I know it says 600 quid, but it says here you could easily pay it off in monthly instalments. I don't <laughs> see why it's difficult and why I can't have the electric car. <laughs> I used to pine over Walkmans when they used to come out. Uh, when I first got my paper round, and when I first got my uh, first was it college job, I went to a, a college where they paid you thirty five quid a week to go to college. Right. <laughs> wow. And well, it was I, I was rich. I didn't have anyone to spend it on. It was brilliant, and. Really? Um, I used to look through all the Walkmans and, oh, okay, I want that one. It's got all I reverse on it. Oh, yeah. it's, it's got the, the double bass thing on it as well. And, oh, yeah. I miss them days because now it's just iPods. Okay, yeah, whatever. I mean, did you not Did you not have moments where you kind of, you went into a shop so many times that the staff actually knew used to know you? Yep. I mean, because that that's what used to happen. There was a computer game shop called The Village in, in Shortlands, just down the road from me here. And every Saturday morning, there used to be me and my girlfriend's brother, who was one of my classmates, and we used to go down to The Village and we used to wait on Saturday morning and just talk to the guys there. It was like a little boutique shop. It was literally the size of a living room. And we used to talk to them and wait for the pack, the wait for the delivery of the new games to turn up, so that we could figure out what new games were, you know, out, and buy them. And you know, and they all turned up on in cassettes, you know, in a box, you know. And it was like, I was like, oh, you know, you, when that place closed, a little bit of me died because mm. it was like, oh no. Um, there was I'll... a shop in Sidcup called the Silica Shop. It was just oh, off Silicon Shop. Yeah, I know it. Do you remember it? Yeah, I actually bought my Amiga there. Ah, cause I used to buy my Amiga games from there, <laughs> and I bought a massive joystick from there. But I spent weeks and weeks riding up there and looking at this joystick and saying, oh, "I haven't got enough money for it yet. I haven't got enough money for it yet." And it wasn't even one of these analog ones. It was just switches. I was very disappointed when I got it home. Mm. <laughs> 
Thomas Thomas McCamberley had one called Fandom Two. He graduated from an ankle biter to a grizzled old gronard right there. <laughs> <laughs> Doreen's make the saying that I'm making her think of the Cheers theme tune. <laughs> uh, there was um, the Games Workshop in Brent Cross. I used to spend many an hour there. Andy, unplug your microphone and plug it back in. Yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. Um, Games Workshop. I used to love Games Workshop. Oh, yeah. I'm- Going wrong, it, it reeked, and you could smell that a country mile away. But you know, you go in it's fucking little models and paints, and you could spend hours all day just painting models. Mm. Well, people had hobbies, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, just just even like, like nowadays, like all these collectibles that everyone's got, you know, they buy all these special editions. I used to have to make a whole day trip just to go to the Forbidden Planet, and the their one... trip. Luxury, luxury, <laughs> dear trip. And it was in Denmark Street. It wasn't even the one in um, when it moved to the uh, was it Oxford Street? Yeah, it was Denmark Street. And this place smelt like you would not believe. I mean, it was just like it was like someone's air conditioning had broken down twenty years ago, and someone left a dead rat in it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, sorry, carry on. I was just just my brain suddenly went off on a tangent there. Um, no, you you reminded me of cruising records in Welling High Street as well. I used to buy all my Acorn Electron games in there, and they had like different grades of games as well. And bearing yeah. in mind this is all paper round um, money that I was using, and so you'd buy the one ninety nine games, which were crap. Firebird games were good, but th- well, then you'd go up to the two ninety nine games, which weren't too bad, and then they'd have like the big games, which were five ninety nine. Mm. Ah. Well, yeah, but you you had an Acorn Electron, so you were rich. Really? Yeah, Acorn Electrons were the bloody bee's knees at one point. They were the 16-bit generation. Were they? Yeah, first 16-bit computers. Are you sure? Pretty sure. They had they had um Virus or Zarish or whatever it's called. Zarek. It was there was two. There was Zarek and there was Virus or otherwise known as Lander, and that came out that came out the on the Acorn Electron and that came out the Acorn Electron was like just after the BBC and just after the sixty four. Yeah. Because you could play BBC games on the Acorn Electron, but you couldn't play Acorn Electron on the BBC. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. maybe I was very posh. Oh. <laughs> 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 yep. I'm gonna start looking down my nose at people. <laughs> yeah, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you what I found these days, though, is how frustrating it is it when you can't find what you want online. Like you have to go out and buy something in the shops. Because I had that today. I had to buy a new lens cap for one of my lenses, and Amazon was sold out. I'm like, damn it, I need this. I'm going away on Saturday. Had to go into town. First shop didn't have it. It's like, fucking hell. I, I want this epic. Lord of the Rings S quest across all of London <laughs> trying to find this fucking lens cap until finally, you know, at five to five. Just picture you like J.R. Hartley in the Yellow Pages advert. Like, well, you see, if it had occurred to me to call, I would have saved myself a hassle, but it like, didn't. Like Brian Cox on a mountain as a helicopter pans past him. It, it was exactly like that. Exactly like that. Um, oh, would you like to go on an adventure? <laughs> yes, we're going to get a lens cap. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the sense of accomplishment when I found it, it it, it was pretty accomplishing. It was like, way. Hang on, so where I'm does home. where does one purchase a lens cap nowadays? Uh, I can tell you where one doesn't. One doesn't purchase it from uh, Curry's. One doesn't purchase it from John Lewis. One doesn't purchase it from a Calumet camera shop in Euston Road because they were sold out. One doesn't purchase it from any of the camera shops down all of Topknock Road, but one does purchase it from Camera World just off of Oxford Street. So, this lens cap is sold out every... What is so special about this lens cap? Without getting overly technical, Canon uh, decided to pull an Apple recently and change the size of their main lenses from 77mm to 82mm, which means they're fucking ball late to find. So now you know. <laughs> did you but gra- anyway... Did you grab it like the idol from... Uh... Raiders of the Lost Ark with the bag no, of I'll sand. T- I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I did do when I turned up there. He had two and I said, I'm buying both of them. I said, fuck <laughs> it. I don't care who's coming after me. I'm fucking having both of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it was, 
Ah, Dr. Jones, once <laughs> again I prove that there is nothing you can possess that I cannot take away. <laughs> exactly. It belongs in the museum. Yeah. So do you. Yeah. Anyway, um yeah, and then 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 later on the irony is that Andy found out the Pringles lid would fit perfectly. <laughs> Strangely enough, I, I I have considered that in the past, they won't. They would have fit the old lens, uh, the 77mm, but not the old. But that's a story for another time, <laughs> hmm. Okay, right. I'm going to move on, uh, move us on to. Um, okay. Unless there's anything else anyone wants to say about purchasing like, stuff. Dave. Yes, hello. Hello. <laughs> what? I mean, you you are a man of, of, of worldly goods and buy stuff. I mean, what did you used to do before the internet? Uh, well, uh, mainly Argos, I think. I mean, that's where I got my first sort of a console, but my Atari 2600, which I, which, which I bought way after it was a big console. Like, like Nintendo had been... like vastly overtaken it so i got it for like peanuts by comparison so i'm spending all my time playing centipede and crystal castle <laughs> <laughs> nice and then there's um there's all like flea marketplaces as well i mean like you don't see as much anymore because sort of ebay sort of taken that over i mean they are still out there but sort of nowhere near as as regular as you know, or as common as they were back then i know um uh, like uh my dad when he was living in bexley heath there was like a when I went around there when I was younger, there was a big sort of flea marketplace of places you could like, yeah, buy and sell like old Star Wars figures and stuff like that, or old comics and you know, just, just like little sort of like, just on sort of pop up tables and stuff, which you don't see anymore because again, yeah, you know, that sort of thing just goes straight onto eBay now. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the thing, isn't it? It's like it's like there used to be that whole thing of you used to be able to guarantee that if you were looking for something electrical, you could walk up Tottenham Court Road and literally walk into one shop. Ask them how much something was. Go into the next shop next door. Say, oh, the people next door were giving me this. What can you give me? And you could literally, because there were so many of them all on top of each other, you could hop up all the way up the top of the street. And then by the end of it, you'd have knocked like 50% off by the time you reached the one at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> but, but nowadays, they all just get their phones, go straight onto eBay and go, no, that's how much it's going to cost. <laughs> You're like, oh, fuck. What, you going to give me anything off? No. Oh, right done well the yeah. boot fair has kind of died as well because of that when we did our boot fair issue or episode sorry uh, it was just trying to find a bargain there it there there is nothing because people know ebay they can sling all their good stuff on ebay and get pretty good money for it and then the people walking around the boot fairs are just okay yeah you can have the crap that's left over yeah yeah, and the other, because the other thing with eBay is there's this whole thing of like, well, you know, if something you bought is shit, you can just send it back to them and ask for your money back. You know, there's there's a sort of, you know, there's none of this sort of thing with boot fairs where you sort of like, you give someone something that you've spent all night polishing and go, ha-ha, got them, and then run away mm. with the money under your arm. Um, but yeah, it's it's... Yeah, the yeah the boot fair's basically done itself in by basically being so full of shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I used to buy a lot of Amiga games for, there as well. There used to be lots of guys with their stalls out and just rows and rows of these blue, blue beautiful discs. And it was yeah. a pound a disc. And if you found a game which was four discs, okay, you got four quid. Brilliant. But if you can find one with like one or two discs, you're you're on a bargain straight away. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Piracy. There's there's a there's a thing. What did we do before the internet? <laughs> it, it was still there. It wasn't invented by the internet, was it? No, not oh. at all. We get part of videos. Mm. I had a copy of Jurassic Park without half the effects in it. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Was it weird watching the the correct version then after that? No, because I'd seen it in a cinema first and then um we got the correct. I, I remember it started in a different place. It started with them actually digging up the um, the raptor in the desert, and um, I think it was mostly the stuff in the kitchen wasn't. There was no effects there, so you had like things just randomly falling where the raptors interacted with them. It didn't have the T Rex bit at the end either. So the, the uh, at the end when the bones all collapse, they just fell. Uh, I'm guessing it was an FX <laughs> work print. But yeah, it's just you, you, what, what should. Oh yeah, I was. Twelve years old or something like that. So you know, you, you don't really 
really recognise that something's wrong there, why it doesn't happen. It's just like, oh, well, whatever, you know, it's Jurassic Park. Hey, the quality was atrocious. I remember that. It was properly shit. But we stuck with it, though. Well, it was because you had, you had it before anyone else did. It was yeah. just like, it was even more verified. I mean, that was something to be spoken in hushed tones in the playground. It's like, I have a copy of Jurassic Park at home. <gasps> you know? <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I find it sort of interesting. I was watching a DVD the other day. It had one of those sort of anti-piracy ads at the start of it, yeah. and it was one of the older anti-piracy ads where it's you know some people sort of like like, like some bloke's got some dodgy store and he's selling sort of like DVDs and stuff. And they oh that's that's quaint. Oh, so it's not you wouldn't steal a car. <laughs> well, it, like, like it was, but it, it was oh. like but you know they they made the um they eventually made the switch to showing sort of somebody downloading something rather than yeah. sort of buying it from some dodgy keys at a marketplace. Cause that's sort of where they sort of transition from, from piracy became from sort of, you know, sort of blokes selling sort of dodgy videos or DVDs of, you know, like knocked off copies to now you can just download mm. it illegally. Like you don't, even, you don't even need to leave, leave your house or talk to some sort of dodgy bloke at a pub. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a little anecdote. Uh, I, I used to work in a shop in Harrow and it, it, I used to feel really sorry for uh, they, they'd come in with a plastic bag, say, you want to buy DVD? And and I felt really sorry for them in that, no, I don't, because I can download a better quality version of what you have to offer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, no, I'm I'm sorry. Um, we, 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 here, I've, I've got some change here. Go, go and buy yourself something warm to drink because <laughs> it, was, it was just pathetic, basically. Yeah. Mm. So what pirate movies did we all have? Um, I remember having, well, basically my dad got in with the guy at the video shop in Downham. Um, and basically they would go, they would go for a drink every day. <laughs> um, uh, just, just after, well, as dad was ending, ending work, he'd pop in and have a drink and then the guy would sort of open up the shop. So, at the end, you know, dad would come home and he'd literally have like like three or four tapes, but they didn't actually say, you know, didn't have like proper covers. So pretty much everything I watched, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so there was um, so I I always remember Alien, Jaws, Dawn of the Dead, and uh, what was the other one? There was another one which was always on. There was um, oh, the only one that we owned was properly owned was um, a Bugs Bunny collection. <laughs> Mm. which no. was yeah which which was really funny because it actually um cost cost my dad 70 quid because it was a rental copy because you remember you used to get the rental ones yeah yeah, yeah well, the, the ex rental ones that came in the massive boxes yeah that's exactly. right and when I, dad... I got i got quite a few of those actually um but they weren't brought ex rental they were acquired when they were still in the rental shops shall we say <laughs> Um. Any go on. Uh, carry on. I'll, I'll 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 step back. I won't say any more about that because uh, yeah, I will just go through my entire DVD collection for the last <laughs> twenty years. Okay, Dave. Top two pirate movies that you got before the internet turned up. Uh, I I don't think I ever really got any pirate stuff before the internet. Really, I I I, I maybe I just didn't move in the circles where people sort of pass that sort of stuff on. It's just not something that. I came across. I mean, when you went, whenever you sort of saw those ads, it's like, where did people get these things? I did. That's the thing, though. You had to move in them circles, didn't you? Yeah. So, so yeah, I I never really had any, anything pirate, just because yeah, I didn't have the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but if yeah. it was there, I would have so much. <laughs> Andy, what about you? Well, yeah. Uh... Aside from Jurassic Park, which I mentioned, um, oh, we, we we had Disney films and stuff like that. But just going back to the rental ones that Lee was talking about, I have um, all three of the original Star Wars as ex rental copies. Um, CIC, I think, was the brand or something like that. Again, yeah, the huge right, boxes. Yeah, yeah. Um, also have a motion, Star Trek the slow motion picture as an ex rental one. Um, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, uh, that that that's a thing. <laughs> my my uncle got me a copy of Empire Strikes Back. And at the very beginning, you know when you see the Star Destroyer coming slowly towards you, uh-huh. it, the aspect ratio was off. <laughs> and so it it wobble and then 
squat down. And when I eventually saw the correct version of that, it felt so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was it wasn't right. I was always used to the Star Destroyer squatting down. It, it, mm. it just feels weird. Um, um, the other one I had was Batman. And you think DC films are grim and dark and gritty now. Flipping <laughs> hell. The only thing you could see in that copy was the Joker's face when he laughed. That was the <laughs> only thing. It was just people fighting and flashes of light every now and again. People talking and then the Joker's face. And that's all you could see in this copy. <laughs> but by God, I would watch it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, when you say it's strange seeing things, I mean, one one pirate copy I, I do remember having at one point was Robocop, which was taken from the airline tape. <laughs> Actually, I think I might have had that copy as well. Yeah, and it basically, all the swearing and all the violence had been edited out within an inch of his life. So you could actually see their lips moving and saying th- things like, You're, he's a real motherfucker. But then you'd hear, he's a real mother crusher. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of like, dead or alive, you're coming with me. And then he'll suddenly he'll shoot someone and you just see them fall over. You never see blood or guts or anything like that. And by the end of it, you know, I, I only knew Robocop by, by the non-sweary version. You know, that guy's a real airhead. You know, he's a real mother crusher. Um, you're such an airhead dick. <laughs> I remember because they don't they don't have the guy who falls into a vat of acid in there, do they? Because no, he no. just he disappears. No, <laughs> just he just vanishes. Yeah, and I remember when I first saw that properly, I was like, "The fuck is this?" That's horrifying. <laughs> yep. So uh, yeah, yeah. The, the copy of Die Hard I have for the longest time was uh, sort of videotaped off the telly, and again just had all the swearing sort of replaced. And it, the, the most famous line was uh, done as a uh, yippee ki yay masabi <laughs> <laughs> And for ages, for ages, I thought that was the line. And oh. I, I, part of me still kind of prefers it. <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. If, if I say a line, see if you can guess which film it's from, yeah? Okay. Go on. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. Yes, that's uh, the Big Lebowski. Yep. <laughs> God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was it was dubbing. Um, yeah, the actual... It was another uh, air, airline copy, wasn't it? It was an airline copy, yeah, because it's it's when Walter's doing. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. But mm. they overdubbed it. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps, which contextually really doesn't make any sense, but did match up to the lip movements. <laughs> <laughs> but if anything, it just makes that scene even funnier. Yeah, <laughs> you and John Goodman, This is what happens. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh, overdubs. Mm. Well, have you seen the. Um, they always put them on the uh, the Cornetto trilogies when they've had to not replace them. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, like, uh, <laughs> um, the bit in uh, Hot Fuzz when the, uh, the vicar gets shot. Hmm. And then when it originally says Jesus Christ, and then the airline copy goes peas and rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one like that with um, Galaxy Quest, isn't there as well? And uh, when they see the chompers, and you can clearly see Sigourney Weaver mouthing the words "fuck that," and it gets, she goes, "Well, screw that." Well, that, goes, that was taken out for the um, theatrical version as well. I think uh, just for the rating. Yeah, so they wanted like a lower rating, and so they had to sort of take some of the sweariness out. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame, really. Yeah, because that would have been extremely funny. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It seems that we're pushing on to the TV side of things. Mm-hmm. I think my last sort of sub genre of this talk would be on television, mm. and the way that we used our television in the olden days. Mm. I don't know if you know what I'm trying to poke you guys into. Um, well, I suppose in terms of fan interaction and stuff, like mm. being a big Doctor Who fan, obviously before there were sort of web communities and stuff, I for, for a, a, couple, a few years I was a member of the sort of Doctor Who Appreci- Appreciation Society. And sort of the only kind of interaction you had with that was you got like a monthly magazine, which mm. had sort of reviews and articles and stuff. 
And I mean, there was stuff in there sort of written by people who've obviously sort of gone on to being sort of big wings in the world of Doctor Who. There was sort of stuff by you know, like Nicholas Briggs and Paul Cornell and you know, people who back then were sort of fan writers and sort of people in the fan community who have obviously gone on to do big things. But yeah, that was sort of like the only way you had of seeing sort of what other fans sort of thought and stuff through sort of reading sort of fanzines and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I used to I used to find out about things like Star Trek and games and films and everything. I mean, I literally would find things out by by going going to um WH Smith's uh, WH Smith's that would actually sell Starlog. And that was that was literally the only way I'd find anything out about things like things like what were coming up on telly. Starburst was the other magazine. And yeah, so so trying to find out about any any films or any T V stuff would literally be either by accident or because I managed to get to the magazine before it turned up on telly. Um Yeah, I, but, I had that with a, there's another one called T V Zone. Oh yes. Yeah, which was where I like devoured a lot of the nineties. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I found out about things like the X Files and stuff like that was just through uh, articles about it in T V Zone. Yeah. And then obviously the... you would go on to sort of you know, find find out stuff and you know, you'd go on to watch things based on the buzz that were in magazines like that. Yeah, there was old Radio Times, <laughs> and the yeah. red pen would come out. Yeah, <laughs> get the old Video Plus code. Oh my god, Video Plus! Did that thing ever work? Nope. <laughs> you... uh, okay, occasionally. But you you, you wouldn't do... you wouldn't get the whole program that you wanted to video. No, but I'm just having an acid flashback. Do you remember in the top corner you'd get that little black and white checker box letting you know the adverts were coming up? Yes, uh, that would be the moment you hit the pause button on yep. the recording. <laughs> yeah, you knew it was coming. Also, uh, picture in picture. Skill. Picture in picture. So you want to record something on the other side, you wait for it to start and record, and back to watching what you were doing there. Oh, see, I was, <laughs> I was never that posh having picture yeah, in picture. No, no, no. Oh, well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> But I didn't, the, didn't have the, a TV with a remote until I was about like fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, there was no catch up there, as well. So if we missed our program, that was it. It was gone. Oh God, yeah, that was it. I mean, there, I mean, that's what that's what almost killed um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for me. Was that they they literally they they put it on and then I was out one Tuesday and I I missed like the second episode. And I loved the first one, and I missed the second one, and then I kind of got the third one. But as luck would have it, in that's I, I'm I'm very much a night owl, and so one night I actually stayed up super late, and they repeated it on BBC Two before close down. Because remember, the TVs used to shut down at like oh one yeah, yeah <laughs> yeah. Repeated played, played the national anthem and everything. Oh god! And you, and, you, and you have your C facts on BBC Two with a bit of music playing. Yep, that's it. I bit. think tonight we might play out with the national anthem. I, I think we should. <laughs> yeah. it, it seems right. <laughs> maybe maybe weird, but again, that was another one of those strange things that terrified the shit out of me. The national anthem playing because it was like the end of the world. <laughs> it was like not only is TV going off. But they're playing out on a it's thing. Like the, it's like the country's shutting down. <laughs> the whole world was going away at this point, and it's like, oh, right, okay, uh, th- that's it then, is it? Oh, it's like you, you, know. you had the BBC blimp would be on there and goes, and that's the end of our programming for tonight, and goodbye. Dan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it would, be, but it would be like I'm, I'm literally sitting there watching, it going, no, don't go, come back. No, please, and you know the, the things playing because I, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I, there was um, I think it was the Omega Man that had that whole intro with a guy on the radio going, you know, you know, we reaped what we sow. God bless us, God bless us all, and it just kind of like that's the end of the world, and it's like I, I just remember that, and then so every time when TV would go into shutdown, it's like <laughs> that's it, we're doomed, <laughs> ended every night. So I used to try and get to sleep before the TV shut down, even though I would stay up really late. Yeah, it was a creepy kind of time, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you just knew that there was no one there. That was it. Doreen says that Open University used to be on overnight on BBC Two. That's that's very true. Uh, I remember that. 
But yeah, it always used to be on first thing in the morning on Saturdays before like Saturday Superstore started. Basically, yeah. And uh, Sharky and George of cartoons. Sharky and George, blimey, where are you? I keep forgetting you're a fetus. I remember Sharky <laughs> and George. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, shut up, Grandpa. <laughs> I, I, I clearly had grown pubic hair by this point. <laughs> Moved on. Um, yeah. So no, no, yeah. That always that. Yeah. Well, the the Open University didn't used to run on Big Z Two until much later. By that, I obviously had videos by that point. <laughs> <laughs> and the land of the jar was. Um, it's like, it's like, when, like when a breakfast TV started. I mean, that was like a revelation because there wasn't sort of television on that early normally. Up to oh. that point, like, like when it sort of started in the early eighties. Roland the Rat. Yes. TV AM as well. Yeah. yeah. Timmy Mallet. Wincy Willis. <laughs> bloody a bloody Green Goblin. What? No, not Green Goblin. Green <laughs> Goddess. Goddess, that's the one. <laughs> the, yeah, green, uh, the Green Goblin used to do aerobics first. Yeah, that, that was Mr. Motivator. <laughs> no, there, there was. Um, I think I was right the first time. There was Lizzie. You, you get busy with Lizzie in the morning before Mr. Motivator. She was yeah, doing all the aerobics. Like, the, the mad Lizzie, they used to call her. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yep. Well, you know, it was a fairly good description, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, she was. <laughs> she was kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah, um, it has been mentioned in the uh, Mixler chat about C-Fax and Oracle and yes. Bamboozle. Ah, uh, yes. Bamboo- Did anyone jump on there? Uh, occasionally, yeah. You'd have the old like, quizzes and stuff, and you, you had to press the, like, the reveal button to get the answer. Oh man, God. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean like, again, it was it was something I never had at home because we never had a television with teletext, so it was always just like. If, if I go around to either my granddad's house or like a like a friend's house or something, I'd be sort of like you know, staring in awe at CFAX and this kind of interaction that you could have with it and stuff like that. It was more of a news and weather I used. If I mean, it's just that's what it was used for. I I knew there were the games on there, but it, it it used to cycle through, didn't it? You know, the page would be up for a few seconds and then it would go to the next. You had no real control over it. The more was... advanced versions had a pause function. You could sort of stop it. Oh you my could god, pause yes, it. I did, yeah. You could pause it, but then when you unpaused it, it just jumped to where it was now, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> there is a uh, an online version of it on pagesfromcfax.net, which I think scrolls through today's news in the CFAX form. <laughs> and you can't that's, pause it. <laughs> that's that. I, I just found it. That is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's got it's got the time and the clock and everything. Ah, so I'm the stock market shit. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Lucky Minty in the chat said that when she was eight years old, she was on TV AM with Mad Lizzie. Wow, that's got to be online somewhere. Please let that be on YouTube. <laughs> see, see, this is this is this is the internet right there because, like, now that was conde- that was condemned to the mists of time. Now. Suddenly, at least 10, 15 people have suddenly started Googling. <laughs> so, so let us take this opportunity to acknowledge the fact that how grateful we all are that we got most of our stupid shit out of the way before the internet was a thing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, so what do we what do we Google? Do we Google Lucky Minty on TV AM? <laughs> no, no, yes, no. Yes, that's the name she went by when she was eight. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I I know her name. I well, you can look up her name on Facebook, and then you do that Google. That's the Google you do. <laughs> See, you got it's just you got got to be careful about these things. <laughs> no chance she's going. <laughs> Mad Lizzie or Mad Minty? Look up Mad Minty. That'll probably work. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, there we go. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean. The CFAX, the only thing I knew with CFAX was the stuff that was done by Paul Rose. Do you ever know that? No. no. Uh, Paul, well, Paul Rose basically used to write all this crazy shit, and it was a bit like Charlie Brooker writing for um, computer video games. You know, he they, they just didn't think there was anyone actually... Um, anyone actually reading this stuff, so they just wrote mad bollocks absolutely mad stuff um hold on i'm gonna try and see if i can find it carry on talk amongst yourselves but the stuff that he used to write was like a like an ongoing 
Oh, I, just, I just found the music option on that CFAX page. It's horrifying. <laughs> but I can't turn it off now. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Biff, though, that was it. Digitizer. Was on... it like a, a text adventure? No, Digitizer was a video games magazine that was broadcast on teletext between 1993 and 2003 and re- originally billed itself as the world's only daily games magazine. A digitizer was created by Paul Rose and Tim Moore, who went by the pseudonyms Mr. Biffo and Mr. Hares. And basically... Starting to ring a bell. Yeah. every For every person who hated digitizer, there were dozens more who loved it. Um, the campaigns were waged to have digitizer's team fired. <laughs> um, yeah, that was... Um, uh, Digitizer frequently caught a controversy, inspiring criticism both from inside, from outside groups and Teletext's own editorial team, who viewed the writers as troublemakers who were una- but were unable to axe them due to the magazine's popularity. Um, yeah, they would just do they would do money for old rope. <laughs> they just wrote any old shit. They used to do regular characters like the man with the long chin, um, Mister T which would be Mr. T who would dispense worldly advice while warning kids to stay away from his bins. (laughs) (laughs) His distinctive vocal style was brought across by the use of random capitalization of entire words and sentences. There was (laughs) Zombie Dave, a reanimated corpse who who appeared on the news page and punctuated the items and comments written in the manner of a shambling dead. And this was frequently used as an excuse to get rude comments screened on family-friendly service, such as when he described Tomb Raider's Lara Croft as the bird with the tits. (laughs) (laughs) But spelt like T-H-R-R-R-B-R-R-R-D-W-R-R-Z. T H R R tits T I S S S D Z Z like that. Um, there was Gossie the dog, um, perhaps Digitizer's most controversial character. Gossie hosted a regular game gossip page. On one occasion, the Broadcasting Media Standards Commission upheld a complaint against Gossie, which alluded to Gossie's master thrashing, uh, thrashing the talking cartoon dog with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, and there was also Dr. Derek Doctors, a sinister megalomaniac whom Biffo and Hare secretly removed from the air after concerned mother rang to say she found it perverted and disgusting. So, uh, yeah. Well, that sounds like a shitty superhero right there. Yeah, <laughs> you need to check it out. Digitizer on Teletext was brilliant. It was the only reason to go on it. Um, yeah, but there you go. Nice. <laughs> Let's bamboozle. There you go. Faceless BW, a quiz master who's bizarre parody of Bamba Bamboozle of Bamboozle. So he often appeared to be nude in 8 bit. <laughs> Yellow, wasn't he? Yeah, but in 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 Digitizer they made a a piss take um who was nude. Right. Mm. I yeah. I remember scanning Bamboozle and there was joke pages on there as well. Mm. Uh there was also I Used to get the sports three three nine two, I think it was. Mm. God, I still remember. I'm gonna to have to Google that now. Let me see if I just Google page three nine two. What am I gonna get get with? Mm. But do do look up digitizer digitizer two thousand. It's on now. Uh, digitizer two thousand dot com, um, and also look up Mister Biffo. And trust me, you you will not believe some of the stuff they used to get away with because they thought no one was watching <laughs> well the thing is the parents would let the children go on to that and oh they're, they're going to be reading jokes and then they'd go off mm. and leave them to it yeah and sure enough there was <laughs> there was there was mis- there was the man with the chin who was basically a toilet roll with a pair of hands and he didn't save someone from freezing to death in the toilet yeah wow that's dark. <laughs> it's great. It's really good. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Do you reckon we, <laughs> do you reckon we miss that now? Or is it good that it's gone? Like CFAX and stuff like that. Well, the problem is, it, it, well, you, you can, there's nothing you can get on there that you can't just get on the internet, is there? The internet is basically a really jazzed up version of CFAX. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, in the case in the case of something like the the digitizer on teletext, if that went live now, there would be a two hundred million person campaign to have it banned. 
immediately. And, you know, by by a hundred thousand judgmental people on Twitter saying ban this sick filth. None none of whom actually watched it, just heard about it, so obviously bandwagon her Yeah, it's, well, it's turned into a creepy pasta now, isn't it? Yeah. But that's what that's what I'm saying. It's it's that's that's the thing, you know, by you know, what the internet's done is brought us all together, but what it's also done in some ways is stifled our creativity by turning the whole the whole set the whole thing into essentially one big judgment machine. Yeah. And you can't you won't get you won't get things like Charlie Brooker sort of talking talking the shit about video games on the back of CMVG anymore. You wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get this digitized. You wouldn't get things like that because okay, sure, some of them are near knuckle and really some of them you shouldn't have been showing your kids. But the fact of the matter is because kids kids were watching this shit and kids were reading this stuff You've got the comedians and the people, the humorists that you've got today. But, you know, if that happened now, there'd be 100,000 mothers against Paul Rose, bang, you know, it'd be, or something like that. And it would just be, everything kind of just, would just collapse in, in and it stifles that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and that's what that's what I think is the, probably the worst bit about the internet in general. Yeah. Did anyone know or did anyone book a holiday from the CFAX. No, no. No. <laughs> no. I know people that sat in their front room with their suitcases packed looking on CFAX for a holiday. Really? And they and they swore blind that was the best way to do it. And have you heard from any of them again? I'm yeah. not friends with them anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that because they're still in a bathtub? <laughs> but... No, they they went to Lanzarote real dirt cheap. No, it, right. It yeah. worked, but mm. the thought of actually packing your bags and then relying on CFAX to give you a holiday, oh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> mm, I, don't, I, I mean, it always just seemed like something other people would do. I, I just, no, not really my thing. No. By the time by the time I started booking holidays, you know, the internet had been well and truly firmly established, so really I I never got into that whole thing at all. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Is there anything that anyone wants to touch on before we, we finish off on on this subject? <laughs> I'll make I'll I'll make one observation. Mm. Without the internet, none of us would be friends. This is very... we would we wouldn't know each other. There's no way that we would know each other even existed without the internet. Friends is a loose word. <laughs> Associates, then. <laughs> well wishers, in that we wish not each other no particular harm. Mem- yeah. Members circulating within a certain social strata. How yeah. about this? Um, yeah, I mean, that's very true, though. I mean, the, the funniest one was, in fact, Andy and, and me, because when the internet was kind of still in its sort of early days and forums were a big thing, it's like I was on a 3d forum and andy was on the same forum and we you know we kind of occasionally chatted it wasn't anything major but then all of a sudden it's like when the black dog had its first shindig and he turned up and it's like hold on i've known you for nearly 10 years but i've never actually talked to you in person (laughs) we've never had an interaction before and yet here i am because yeah. that's creepy at all. <laughs> that was re- no, but it was. It was really, really bizarre, wasn't it? It was just like suddenly yeah. going from going from, oh, so you listen to this, and I used to talk on the same forum as you, and yet somehow we both know each other from two totally different places. It's like, wow, how did that happen? Yeah, yeah. And unless, of course, you're a stalker, in which case, get off my lawn, and I'm calling the police. <laughs> both possible. Let's go with the latter. <laughs> Is that you standing on my lawn? Well, I hope not. Tap on his window. Tap on his window. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I've got a light this bag of shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, my, my point is, 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 it's the one thing I'll say, w- without the internet, many, many of my dearest friends I, I would never have met or even known existed just because, the, the, you know, you had a much smaller circle of, friends and interaction you had people you grew up with people you worked with and people you met down a pub that, that was yeah. kind of it mm. yeah yeah it's broadened the horizons now hasn't it 
yeah, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people I've been exposed to on the internet who I wish I'd never had any exposure to. But yeah, it's, you know, you take your money, you take your chance. <laughs> exactly. Dave, is there anything else you'd like to add on to this subject? Uh, no, I mean, other than to, to add upon what I had he said, like without the internet, I wouldn't have met my girlfriend. So you know, <laughs> way cool. <laughs> the internet's responsible for that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need all, to... all the silliness that sprung from that. I was going to say, you need to sound a little bit more enthusiastic, Dave. <laughs> I, yes, I found my girlfriend. <laughs> well, it, it's one the thing is, I mean, like when it's like we first got together and people were sort of saying, "Oh, how did you meet?" And mm. so, yeah, you know, we, we'd almost shy away from saying, "Oh, so, through the internet," you know, because like, yeah, you know, even mm. sort of seen as a bit of a weird thing. Yeah, you know, you'd. you'd yeah, you'd meet a life partner in that in that fashion, whereas sort of obviously these days it's it's much less rare. Mm. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, it's, so yeah, we all, we always sort of kind of sheepishly confessed it in a way. Yeah. Well, we have family friends that just use the internet now. Yeah. That's that's all they they don't go down the pub and work on relationships in that sort of way. It's more a case of okay, right, you match this sort of quota that i've got in my head or i've typed down and okay let's go with that and they all seem very happy with it so it, it, i think it's just a case of progression really isn't it absolutely hmm. yeah definitely i mean it's the, the the hardest thing to do is try and explain it to someone who doesn't use the internet i think yes the, that's that's the one thing you know you get your like you like your parents and that kind of thing sort of going Going so, um, you're you're what you're meeting someone you've never met before, and it's like, yeah, but I've been talking to them for years and years and years and years, and they're like, yeah, but they could be anyone. You're like, yeah, but they're not because I know they are not because I know people who know people. You know, it's like friends of friends, and it's like they they just they just don't understand it. It's just terrifying to them that I would go to I don't know Bristol and meet Rob for the first time or. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Or or in the case of like my first ever internet friends was um uh Christian and Martin from who, you know, are animators who used to it was really funny, used to talk to them on on um, this forum and then all of a sudden it was like one day they revealed that they were animators and I said, Oh well I'm an animator or do three D and they said, Oh, where do you work? And I said, Cartoon Network, blah, blah, blah. And they went, Okay, well, where is that then? And I'm like, Well, that's kind of Great Marlborough Street and they're like we're in Poland Street, and if you look out your window, we can wave to each other. It's like, <laughs> fuck. And I just did. It was like literally waving across the street at each other. And it was like, okay, do you want to go for a beer? Yep. And it was like, <laughs> it's bizarre, but actually amazing. So, yeah. Cool. In the chat room, Doreen has said, uh, without the internet, podcasts would have been on DVDs and CDs or something. Uh, I have thought of burning some episodes onto a CD and just leave them on random buses. <laughs> I think I might do that. Next time I'm down in London, I think I might do that. Jack Dorian. Woodgate says um, his mum still thinks he's going to be murdered or join some sinister cult whenever he tells her uh, meeting up some guys down on the internet. I, I hate to break this to you, Jack, but you are part of a sinister cult. It's called the Black Dog. Yeah. <laughs> e -E have you, man. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Done now. Um, but no, I was going to say something that, that, um, that Doreen just said there. But So in the old days, did no one ever do pen pals or ever meet up with their pen pals? Did you ever have pen pals? No. Uh, I think I had some for a while, sort of like, uh, sort of like school-based things. They'd, they'd sort of, you out with pen pals from sort of other countries or something, or, or people from the opposite end of the country. You, you know, you'd write to them for a bit, and then you just kind of go, eh, eh. Because <laughs> you, you know, you've been set up with a pen pal that you, know, mm. you you wouldn't necessarily share interests with them, so it's just sort of like, well, this is my day. I did a thing, and I read a book, and I went out, and they mm. and like, there'd be no sort of feeling of you know, it's not like those you know, sort of uh, great sort of romantic stories of uh, letter writing from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I'm sat at some sort of like a sort of 17th century writing desk with a with a doing quill. your Samuel Pepys thing, eh? Yeah. 
Dearest Daddy, the most curious thing happened today. <laughs> I ventured out to Tesco's, and what was I presented with? Only eggs for 37 pence. Yeah. Rumblers was doing a sale, and Bee Jam had all his frozen food in it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, what I was going to say, the one thing that we were saying about sharing your discs and stuff like that was in the back of games magazines, there used to be um, like a, a sharing thing that you could write off to like it's called like um public domain discs and yeah. share, share and enjoy was the other one and you know and all these other people and you used to be able to sort of trade games via these kind of nefarious sort of back back routes using using um jiffy bags and and the postal service and i always remember used to used to saturday morning you used to get a jiffy bag from the people you used to swear swap things with and you'd get like a bunch of discs, which have obviously got like sort of taped over things. And I always remember, and maybe this is probably where I bow out at this point, but I always remember putting in one disc and then my Amiga was chugging away. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Saturday morning. I'm sitting here in my dressing gown. And it went chuk, 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 and it went quiet. And then the music went, welcome to Strip Poker 3. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, but that whole thing, that whole swapping scene, was like that was as close to the, to what I thought the internet was back in the day, because it was that whole thing of going on a bulletin board and just saying, "Hi, I'd like to sign up, and this is my address." And you'd be, oh right, okay. <laughs> Sometimes them games would actually end up on the cover disc of the magazine as well. Yeah, that's it. There'll be loads of cover cover discs just being ripped off and people just copying stuff on and swapping them around. Yeah. I always remember an episode of Tomorrow's World which said at some point in the future we'll be able to order items and stuff like that from the comfort of our own home. And I, and I distinctly remember scoffing at the notion, thinking that was stupid. <laughs> Shows what I know. Yeah, they had a, a self-parking car by Volkswagen. And I remember scoffing at that, going... Oh, give over who's ever gonna need that <laughs> it was brilliant because it it pulled up to this thing and just, it wheels went at peculiar angles just to wiggle its way into this uh, very small box it was brilliant mm. but i never thought it'd ever be out there well in fair in fairness it still doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> you need you need a very large space and some very um patient people behind you yeah Wait for the car to slowly make its way in. But, um, yeah, there you go. Okay. I feel like we've reached the end now. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. Cool. Right. We've only got six minutes left. So if there's anything you want to say, say it now or forever. Hold your peace. Um, I good. want to go back to the 80s. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us talk and whittle on and nostalgia. Is that the correct term for that? I Let's nos- say yes. Yes. <laughs> I nostalgia. You mean nostalgia. We all nostalgia. We, we nostalged. We, <laughs> we, yeah. Oh, God, that's a horrible word. Um, yes, we were reminiscing on the stuff from mm. days of yore. Uh, thank you to Dave. Thank you. I'm going around this magical table in front of me. Uh, Andy's <laughs> in the middle. Thank you, Andy. Hi, you're welcome, Alton. And Lee. Yay, hello. Hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it's at the end now. We're not starting again. Um, uh, do you guys want to plug your stuff, please? Okay. Uh, starting with Dave. Uh, certainly, you can find my stuff on geekplanetonline.com. Uh, my main two shows are Tangential Deviation, which is a uh, chat show with as a, a random element to the chat. And uh, Twice as Bright, Half as Long, which is a show looking back over uh, shows that didn't last longer than two seasons. Uh, currently in the middle of covering Twin Peaks. Nice. Excellent. Andy? Uh, yeah, you, you can hear me with uh, Mr. Medcalf and uh, His Holiness the Reverend Organ on Space Doc Jury, which is at space.geekplanetonline.com, where we have a very informed and intelligent discussion about which spaceships would win in an imaginary game of Tom Trump's that we totally don't make up the rules as we're going for. Um, <laughs> and, and you can also hear me with Elton talking about Formula One stuff, but he'll have to tell you the details because I, I don't know them. 
Oh. I wasn't paying attention in the meeting, I'm afraid. <laughs> and Lee, is there anything you'd like to divulge? Um, yeah, there's a Black Dog podcast um, with me and Elton and Jim and Dan, Darren, and basically anyone else who decides to come on to defend terrible films. And you can find that on uh, blackdog.geekplanetonline.com. And you can also find it on iTunes. And our Facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog podcast. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone in the chat room. It's been a blast. It's been amazing. Yep. I it has. don't know how many comments have been on there, but it's been brilliant. So thank you very much for everyone who's joined in there. Still means you still have to download it. I don't care if you don't listen to it. You still have to download it. Okay. <laughs> so you've entered into a binding contract. Yes, I can't reiterate that enough. That still has to happen. And <laughs> also, ideally, copy it to a cassette tape and go and give it to random people on the bus. Yes. <laughs> I will do that one day. I'm, I think I will do that. Why not? Just yeah. do it. Just do it. Okay, well, I'm going to go buy some blank CDs and just <laughs> write on there. Listen to me or play uh, me. Cassettes, cassettes, mate. Yeah, go for it. go hipsters. Okay, cassettes. <laughs> but you well, know what? It's going to end up people just going to be caught saying it's like something like the Ring. You know, it's going to be you listen to this and you die in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> and then the telephone rings. Yeah, exactly. You'll hear it. It'll be like eh, you'll die in seven days. <laughs> Don't give him ideas. Please don't give him ideas. Anyway, if you've enjoyed us with Lin on, uh, please visit uh, rogue2.com, which is where all the podcasts are hosted. Uh, the one that me and Andy does, which is grandprixpodcast.com. There's a little video coming out very soon, as soon as I get all the, the legal negotiations out the way. Scott, with, it's got to sort it out with Bernie. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll work with cool. Bernie. And then yeah. hopefully he'll let me put that up on YouTube. We never know. Uh, also there's a Patreon we do have a Patreon I know everyone else has a Patreon that's fine but we have a Patreon as well um, otherwise my kids won't be able to eat food because we won't have anything on the table for them to eat uh, that is at patreon.com forward slash rogue2media please pop along there consider helping us out it's up to you that's it I suppose um, so thank you very much for everyone who's joined us listened to us downloaded us please spread the word and listen to all the other podcasts that have been related to you on here so until next time thank you very much bye 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 to our bye